afternoon. English is okay for everyone? I assume it is. Um, my name is Nick, and this is Yoris. And uh, today we're going to talk about the state of search, uh, also facets and solar and Elasticsearch and whatnot in Drupal 8. Drupal 7, it's, like, it's past, right? So, uh, a little bit about who I am. Um, I'm now living in Ghent. I uh, lived in Barcelona and Lisbon, uh, also in Boston. In Boston, I uh, was at the Acqui office, um, but it was too cold. So, we opened up a little office in Ghent. Um, and I've been uh, with the Drupal community for more or less eight years. And most of that time I've spent with search. Uh, just maybe one thing to note, in a day job, I don't do anything with Drupal or with search. It's purely relaxing for me. So um, that's something about me. Um, my name is Jonas. Um, I live in Michelin. Um, I have 61 courses. Um, and I've been doing PhD for seven years and Drupal for three and a half, something like that. So, of course. Uh, we're going to talk about search, and as most of you know, in Drupal 8, this is a purely search API. We merged Apache Solar and search API in Drupal 8. Who didn't know? Or like, what's the difference in our audience? Everyone knows about search API? Or who doesn't? Maybe raise your hand if you don't know what that is. Um, so I'll, I'll explain shortly. So, Search API started in 2010 for the Drupal 7 version, and it started from Google Summer of Code project. Um, and basically, it said, like, okay, I can do, or we can do search better than uh, what currently is in core search. And on top of that, it uses a couple of backends, for example, MySQL backend or Solar backend or Elasticsearch backend. Um, and you can use that to make search pages with views, etc., etc. Now, um, there's a whole lot of different data structures in Drupal and in Drupal 8 that even like increased um, users and entities were somewhat dissimilar in Drupal 7, but they were not the same. In Drupal 8, it's much easier to just iterate over all kinds of content structures, go over all the fields, um, and there's a whole bunch. So we did that whole big merge uh, three years ago. Can you imagine that, that ID to merge those modules three years ago and in a couple of weeks or two weeks, Drupal 8 will launch? Um, and it, it started with like a crowdfunding campaign to get some money together because one of the maintainers of Search API, uh, his nickname is Drunken Monkey, um, is a freelancer and purely focuses on Search API. Uh, of course, if you want to port a module like that, and it's not a small one, you need some funding. Uh, so we got some crowdfunding, we did Drupal Dev Days, DrupalCon Sprints, dedicated sprints, Google Summer of Code participants, for example, Elasticsearch, lots and lots of test coverage, um, and then the result of that is that the Drupal 6 version of Apache Solar is dead, the Drupal 7 version will be supported, but there's no Drupal 8 version, and for Search API, there will be a Drupal 8 version for Solar, um, and uh, we're currently also in an alpha state for Search API. Now, um, a bit about the Drupal 7 version of Search API before I go to Search API Drupal 8. Uh, the issue queues in Drupal.org are powered by Search API. And then, of course, you say, okay, it's for sure it's powered by Solar, right? Uh, well, that's not the case. It's powered by the MySQL backend because of some technical difficulties with Solar there. However, um, they contributed a lot to the performance of the MySQL backend. Um, and if you can think that a site like Drupal.org can work with a MySQL backend uh, and those amount of nodes to index, um, then you can have for sure more than 100 nodes on your site uh, to have the MySQL backend. You don't need solar for everything. It also works just with MySQL. And it became much more stable. This stuff will get ported to Drupal 8. Um, so you can take a bit longer before you go towards the solution with solar if you don't need solar. Um, good. It has resources constraints. Um, and another really important thing I want to talk about is the community influence. Um, these are a couple of people I really want to thank for the three-year commitment to port Search API to the state where it is now, where you actually can download it and start using it. Um, and some of these people uh, only work 
on like volunteering basis after their job, like work hours. Um, all of them uh, were at some point at some sprints. Um, so thanks all for those people. Uh, if you come across them, please give them a hug or whatever they like. So basic architecture didn't really change in Drupal 8. You still have an index. Um, this is the stuff where you find what you want to index. You still have a server. Um, and the server can be the database, could be solar, could be Elasticsearch. In Drupal 8, all of these options work. You can start building your sites with any of those backends. Um, and view support is working. However, there's no possibility to get individual fields from a specific backend. We're still working on that. Aside of that, everything else is working. Um, so you have the what, the how, and the display. Done. Uh, a couple of tips, and uh, we'll get to a little demo soon. Um, there's an option that says index items immediately. And who like, uses that in Drupal 7? Or who knows what that even is? Um, so if you do that, whenever you do a node update, it instantly indexes that item into your index, whatever backend that may be. Be careful, because if you update a single node or a single entity 50 times, it will index 50 times the same thing. Uh, so we will update that, uh, that node 50 times into the same backend. That's like a, a waste of your time. So be careful when you use that option. Um, also with Solar, there are some uh, contra things. If you use Solar with replication and you index items immediately, it could be that one search has that result, the other search doesn't. You don't have that problem with MySQL, so we recommend that you use that feature only with the MySQL backend. Um, and here's a little demo on Search API in Drupal 8. It's a video because I cut out some of the slower parts. So you can see we split up uh, Search API and database and database defaults. And uh, in Drupal 7, you didn't have defaults, but in Drupal 8, you can uh, get a working solution out of the box. Uh, and it comes with all the configurations that we think are the most optimal for your search mix. You can uh, combine also content types or entity types. In Drupal 7, that was not possible. You can get users, nodes, um, comments in the same search index. Um, like node, this is impossible in Drupal 7, so this was quite a big change. This is the index items immediately button that I spoke about. You can still, like, every other functionality that you had in Drupal 7 is more or less working in Drupal 8. Uh, it's not. Okay. Um, so, well, that wasn't the full demo, I think. Let's try that again. Apparently, in PowerPoint, you can't fast forward. So. Okay, so let's see. I want to go to that fields. Let's hope it gets there. Come on. No. Okay, I, I, uh, so it actually continued. So this is like if you have multiple content uh, types, you can configure them differently, whichever bundle is a Drupal term you want to use. Um, and then for each entity type, you can select instantly all the fields and you see that the rendered item is configured by default. The rendered item is basically an indexation of a view mode in Drupal. Um, so when you index, a specific rendered item, you will be able to search the whole entity in one field instead of indexing all the fields separately. It's very important when you work with the solar backend uh, because you don't want to have all kinds of different fields that you then combine to search. So please use those defaults as the best practices because in Drupal 7, 
This was one of the most common mistakes people used. They just selected all the fields um, and they wanted to search it. So here you see the processors in Drupal 8. Uh, you can select them independently. It's a little different in terms of UI. You can see where each alteration of your data happens. It could be in the pre-query, the post-query, um, and then after in the display. You can select different view modes to index as well. So it could be that, for example, for anonymous users, you only want to index a certain view mode because other content could be restricted, but it also has support for node access. For those that use Drupal 7 uh, certificate, this is not very different, hopefully. Um, and here you see the view, which is also installed by default. You don't have to like, create one again, uh, figure out where your index was. That, that's all there by default, but you still have the possibility to add another one if you want. Um, and you can see that for each entity type that you indexed, you can select a different view mode. And then in the filter criteria, you can then select all the different fields that you indexed that run your item. And for example, the title, because those are the only two that you actually want to search in. So let's see how that looks like. Um, yeah, one other thing, currently in Drupal 8, if you want to start using it, don't use caching. It doesn't work yet. Just so that you're warned. Um, so now I'm going to that views page. And you can see the view mode of that content, it's generated content. And do like a simple search, and it should work. So that's the, the current state of Search API with the uh, database backend. Um, now if we go to Solar, it's a much simpler process. Um, in Drupal 7, you were already able to switch an index from a backend, back and forth. So for example, for developers, you start with the MySQL backend, and then for production, you use Solar. Um, it became as simple as this, and it's like under a minute, normally. So you, you create a new server, and you enable the search by Solar module. You, you configure it. There's a exactly the same configuration options as it was in Drupal 7. And then you get to the index, and you switch the index from the backend. And your view automatically like also will know, okay, I had that index. You, you re-index your items. There's no other configuration you need to do for your view. The view was already added by default, so in, in theory, you can get started with Search API and Solar within a couple of minutes. The only caveat is that you need to know how to start Solar, but um, with Solar 5, that became a bit easier. If there's questions about that, um, I'll try to answer them later. So if we go to our search content now, you see exactly the same, but so like Solar Search actually executed that search. So that's a very simple um, overview of the state of Search API and Solar uh, without facets, and we'll talk about facets later. Um, now, what still needs to happen? The UI is still a bit clunky, so selecting all those fields is uh, still not very easy, uh, and the views um, capability to select individual fields, for example, from your Solar backend, because it could be that there's data in your Solar backend. Um, that doesn't come from Drupal, uh, that's not working yet. We need to work on caching and some operators. Um, and one thing um, that I want to focus on later as well is multi-site searching between Drupal 7, Apache Solar, or Search API and Drupal 8 Search API um, so that you combine your content in one Solar instance and you can search them from whatever site. It could be that you have multiple sites, which is Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, um, but that your content needs to be scattered across those sites. So what's more, um, there's an Alpha 9 release of Search API, so you can start using it right now. I don't know when we will go to beta, um, but if you start using it right now, we can actually test uh, more things and figure out more bugs before going to beta. 
Fast API has a working development version. We'll talk about that in a bit. Search by Pages uh, has alpha release. Um, Search by Solar is the de development release, and Elasticsearch is also in development release. Uh, Elasticsearch was developed by Google Summer of Code students recently, um, and he is still working on that. So that's like a success for uh, our community. Um, I don't know how well it works, uh, but if you do and if you tested it, please let me know. Um, are there any questions so far on Search API before we go to Fast API? Okay. So I'll be talking a little bit about Fast API. Um, first, these are facets. So um, just so you know what we're talking about. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the architecture changes that we did going from 7 to 8. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a custom processor. I'm going to talk a little bit about the context system. I'm going to give a short demo and we'll talk a little bit about what is still to come. So, architecture changes. Um, hope facet, facet API facet info is gone because um, all configuration is now stored in the facet config entity. Um, because uh, global state is now much harder to do, well, it's, it's not um, easy to do in your play, and it's not good to do either, so we store everything on the entity. Um, that means that um, we also um, deleted realms. Um, so searches, hook facet API searching info is gone as well, that is now called a facet source, and that's a plugin. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, realms, they are gone. Um, hope facet API facet adapters um, are, that is now one service, um, so that's a lot easier as well to work with. Um, query types is uh, something that is still not done yet, we're still working on that. Um, but those are plugins and not a hook anymore. Um, widgets have become plugins as well. We really, really like plugins. So um, the hook is gone and it's now a plugin. Um, filters, um, for example, hiding every, um, everything that starts with a special letter or just any processing that you can do or filtering that you can do. On a facet result is a processor now. Sorting of a widget, uh, which used to be a different hook, is now also a processor. Um, a URL, which used to be a hook, is now also a processor. Um, so custom processors, those are things that we really like, and we've done a lot of work in making things into a processor. So a processor has um, three different interfaces, or can have three, three different interfaces. So first of all, you need to add um, a facet API processor annotation to a custom class and that makes it into a fast API processor. And then there's one of three different processor interfaces that you can implement to make it into a custom, or to make it into a processor. So we have uh, three different steps, pre-query, post-query, and build. Um, and each has a different interface. So we have a pre-query processor interface, a post-query processor interface, and a build processor interface. And optionally, you can provide a form and a schema definition for your processor, so you can save configuration data on the processor. So how does this work? You create a custom module, and the code for this is on GitHub, I'll show a bit later. Um, it's uh, just one plugin that you create, and this is all the code that you need to create a custom processor for facet API that hides every result that starts with the letter A. I don't know why you would want to do that, but it is possible and it is six lines of code. <coughs> so that's quite easy to do. You can see uh, in the annotation on the top that uh, this is um, this has the build stage as uh, defined with a weight of 40. So that means um, every processor has a different weight 
uh, depending on where in the process um, that you want to have this process executed. Um, and this also implements the build processor interface and the required build method on that. If you want to have a look at how well, this code is on, on that GitHub link, and it's just that one call and an info file. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the context system as well. This is quite new in Drupal Core. It was committed in Barcelona. Um, so you can see that this is when you're adding a new facet block. You can see um, select a facet value, and this drop-down will show every um, every possible facet entity that you have created. So um, that means there's only one actual block, and you can create different contexts for the block. Um, and this is how that works. We created um, a context provider, and this is the context that comes out of that. Okay, so now I'll show you a short demo. Um, on how to add a facet. So you select a facet source. A facet source is a view um, that implements, that uses the search index, um, and you choose the field that is defined on that search index. Um, this works currently for views that are have a page view, and it works for uh, search API page um, pages. And we're currently working on making it work with a block view, but that doesn't work yet. Um, so this is how you create a facet. Uh, you may saw that there was a big list of processors. That's the UI for that is still really really bad. And we are going to change that, but this is how it currently works. So, if you want to place a block, um, you click on place block, you select the facet block, and you configure the context that you, of the facet entity that you created, save the block, and that's it. Um, so, on the front end, this is what it looks like. You get a bunch of links of the entity with the bundles defined for, uh, for that section is. And that works. So this is the current UI of one widget, the links widget. Um, okay, so there's a couple of things that we still need to do. We need to finish the searching and inspiration. Um, so the blocks, block views for search API views still need to be, uh, be worked on. Um, it currently doesn't work with Drupal Core. We plan to uh, support Drupal Core search pages, but that doesn't work yet. It is, we need to create a new facet source plugin for Drupal Core, and then that should work, hopefully. Uh, we need to port all the remaining processors or plugins or filters. Um, but we have issues created for them, and the work still needs to be done on that. The UI needs to be polished, and Jimmy is currently working on that, but it's not good as it is right now. And uh, lastly, we need to add more tests, integration tests, unit tests, all tests, we need more tests. Okay, um, we are uh, doing a weekly hangout every Monday evening at 8 o'clock. Uh, we're all in Drupal Search API on, uh, on IRC. The Drupal.org node that is shown there is the how to get started with Fast API uh, or how to help contributing um, issue. It has uh, some information on who we are and where we're going and how we want to make Fast API better and how you can help. Um, then there's a an issue search link there as well, and that is uh, we currently have like 10 novice issues in the queue, and anyone who wants to help out can pick one of those issues and can, can help out. So, this is the well, this is uh, 
to work on Barcelona, and we were working on Fascinating Jack. Yeah. Didn't use the same slide as the slide I had just a minute ago. Okay, so these are all the people that have worked on Fascinating Jack, yeah, and I want to thank all of them. Um, so thank you, thank you very much. Um, and we have the same slide for all the people who have worked on Surgery Jack. So that's a lot more people, because it's a bigger project. <laughs> um, so that was everything that I wanted to say about fasting again. Does anyone have any questions about how to purchase? Yeah. Show the context to create fasting. Uh, does that mean that there's no longer exposed to it for years? Well, come on, I'll bounce it. So the contact system in, in Drupal is very different than the, the exposed filter. Um, maybe you're mixing them up, but they're still like exposed filters for views. Um, and that's still like a block that somehow you can put somewhere to search your view with. The context system in uh, Fast API is only used to link a facet entity with a block entity. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. Any other questions? What's the status on the solar attachments? So your question is, what's the status on solar attachments, like TCA? Yeah. Um, I don't think anyone started to work on that yet. Um, but maybe they did, and I don't know. Um, it, I don't think it should be very hard to implement. And um, if you want to join us at the sprint to make it happen this weekend. Sure. If I understand, every entity in Drupal 8 is now uh, able to be indexed by server and search, so I don't need any other third party contract modules to expose anything. That's correct. Cool. <laughs> So like search API term or Apache Solar term, um, any other like, list of other modules is no longer necessary. Okay, uh, unless there's any other questions, I'd like to thank you for listening to us and hopefully you can start building uh, amazing websites. <laughs>